Explorers are we, intrepid and bold, out in the wild amongst wonders untold. Equipped with our wits, a map, and a snack, we're searching for fun and we're on the right track. John here, guys, and today we're finally talking about the Fly Woo Explorer, the design that was inspired by the work of Dave C., the master of the micro long range, and the inventor of this entire class. Um, and yes, I am super, super late to the party. My review copy for this was actually ordered like first couple days of September and it just arrived about a week ago and uh, man so there's already been a million views um, videos made on this thing in fact they just came out with that hex copter version of this but I still think there might be some noteworthy observations on whether you should buy it or build it. And I'm particularly wanting to draw some comparisons to this four inch Arma 10 Gecko that I built up. Now, if you compare the pricing of these two, um, you would think that this would be cheaper, but they're actually fairly close. With a Crossfire uh, receiver installed on both of these, they both come out to about $350. Now with the micro long range, you do get this nice long range style antenna that is a bit of an upgrade and you also get the GPS unit and the buzzer that's included. So there are some um, advantages that you don't get on this price tag, but there are definitely some differences in how they fly. And I'm gonna go over um, what you should do. Pretty much every company has now come out with a version of this. Um, Diatone has the Roma 4, iFlight has one. This is an open source frame design. So a lot of the people in my community, in my chapter, have already been making their own builds of this. And it really just didn't interest me that much. And the, the whole thing is designed around super, super low weight. Even with the Crossfire, you're only looking at about 135, 136 grams with this thing. Versus this, um, also four inch, which is 187 grams. So about 50 grams difference between these two as far as weight go. But what you get with this is some super, super long flight times, especially if you use one of those larger homemade or you can buy them now from multiple places, lie a Lion packs instead of a lipo pack. You can load one of these up and fly for like almost 40 minutes. That is insane. This is the first quad that I've had that was equipped with GPS and I was pleasantly surprised to find that everything worked out of the box. You've been hearing some grumblings of people flashing this and then having difficulty getting the DJI OSD configured and the GPS configured. But I'll, let me tell you, out of the box, everything is set up to work perfectly. There was all of these giant, um, just a plethora. What is a plethora? of on-screen display items whenever you fly. So you can see your height position, you can see your distance position, you can see your speed, you can see your latitude and longitude as you're flying and the number of satellites that you're connected to. So that is really, really nice. The fact that it has this buzzer with its own battery on board means that if you are flying super long range and the battery gets ejected, this will alert you to its position. Uh, it kept going off on me, so there is a button here. So to turn it off, Every time you unplug, you have to turn this off. So don't forget, you just hold long press for about three seconds and then it's off and you're good to go. It comes with a variety of extras in the box. You get two sets of these Gym Fan 4-inch bi-blade props. Um, that's gonna give you the most efficiency uh, for these sort of underpowered motors. This is a special invention. It's a beautiful um, sort of polished uh, silverish chrome finish on these Dave C edition NIN motors. They are a 1404 2750 kV and that's going to give you maximum efficiency. Now what I was expecting was, oh man, it's going to be a long range efficient flyer. It's going to fly underpowered like it has no power at all. And I was pleasantly surprised that if you find flying for 35 minutes boring, you can still actually do some fairly fun freestyle with this. Um, so Flying, you know, some average medium freestyle with some punches mixed in, 
um, plenty of dives and stuff like that, I could get about 10 minutes of flight time on this with a 1050 milliamp Tattoo 4S pack. That is a really nice pack, it's only about 16 bucks. And the fact that you can get 10 minutes on light freestyle, if I was cruising like you would do in one of those long range tests, I'm probably gonna get 11, 12 minutes a flight time so that's really nice for an expensive pack you also get a uh immortal t holder for the front i tend to mount mine in the middle so i just zip tied it on no problem probably saved a gram or two of weight it does come with an extra arm we're going to talk about that later but i really do like that it comes with this gift which is just a little prop wrench thingy um, that's nice it's always nice to have those a wiring diagram an LED for your arm if you choose to install it. It also comes with a couple of braces that you can install. If I was gonna, if this is gonna be like my main quad, I would definitely install those braces on there. It comes with a, a ton of extra screws and hardware and some stickers. So fast forward, the micro long range craze is, as I predicted, starting to kind of move on towards five inch. You know, when Dave C came out with the five inch prototype, his mini long range, and I was one of the first to reach out and say, hey, can I get the prototype? Reviewed it on this channel. I like how that flies a little bit better, um, to be honest. And then the Shocker Light was another evolution of that sort of principle, uh, which is add a little bit more weight, add a little more prop size, and with the same battery, you can actually get about the same flight time, but you have so much more power on tap for freestyle. So this is not a disappointing amount of power. Um, it actually has more power than I expected. It does kind of fly how your average five inch with a GoPro attached, you know, because once you attach the GoPro, you do get a little bit more weight. So it's kind of, because it's so lightweight, it's sort of floaty, and but you still have enough power to do a nice freestyle a nice freestyle um, dip, power loop, stuff like that, uh, which is pleasantly surprising. It is super light though, so a gust of wind will blow you around. So it's sort of an interesting combination. 133 grams is very, very light. I do like that you could, if it was a not a windy day, you could actually throw in a smaller battery, maybe a 650 or an 850, still get about five minutes of freestyle and man that would feel so magical that actually gives you a little bit more of that power back by reducing the weight even further so this is the 16 by 16 stack and they are using the soft serial to get the dji osd on board people have complained about that but i like i said i had no issues at all i do like that flywoo is crediting dave c for this i do like that even though there are some options out there if you look at bardwell's um, comparison of all of the top micro long ranges there are ones that have more power for more freestyle there are ones that have more durability i really like the camera cage design of the roma but this actually does a fairly good job of protecting the components the arms are only three millimeters thick the top and bottom plates are only a mil and a half thick so this is not a basher so if you were going to start bashing you might want to look at one of the other ones or for 350 bucks just build up something like this four inch that has a lifetime warranty and basically gets very similar flight times with a three bladed prop on the same exact 1050 milliamp 4s pack uh, so like if you're not interested in flying 30 40 minutes you can use the same inexpensive 4S packs on both of these, get approximately the same flight time and have a lot more power over here, a lot more durability over here. And this frame actually has a lifetime warranty. So if you want the lightest possible weight for the power ratio, the longest flight times possible, um, the least amount of noise, and the clearest reception for the farthest distance with this antenna setup, GPS setup, and the buzzer already built and set up for you, then this is the way to go. Why go with something that's a little bit more durable at the sacrifice of flight time? If you're looking at maximum flight time, this is the way to go. The original, the OG, if you really wanna go durability and still have some good flight time, just make your own like the Armitan I did. I'll link the video to that below as well if you want the recipe on how to build up one of these. But I mean, just look at, this dead CAD design. There's no props in the view. You can fly forever without having to see any of those props. 
What are you doing in the comments, guys? Are you micro long ranging? Are you still long ranging with a seven inch? I actually built up one of these seven inch FR7 things before getting this, but I just, it's so big. I would rather long range with one of these. Thanks guys.